Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So two days in a row, I know, I guess this is consistency, right? I'm back for a second day in a row after the long hiatus. I wanna thank you all again for your patience. In today's video, we're gonna get into a live trade recorded again on Interactive Brokers where I'm scalping AMD to the short side. Another gorgeous trade, another short position, and I'm gonna get into why I've been shorting stocks more than I've been longing them. I have a specific reason. I wanna share that with you guys today. But I've got the recording I'm gonna bring up right here. And I wanna show this to you and I wanna set this up. So as you can see right here, this 15 minute candle, this is in the pre-market. And what I'm looking to do is just to get short below the low of this candle, about 10 cents lower than that candle. Looking to take it short. One change I did make that I wanna to talk to you guys about is, and you gals about, is that I changed my stop loss to 30 cents. I noticed that AMD was kind of putting in a little, bo little bit more of a range on some of these candles. So I decided to go ahead and go with a 30 cent stop. So if you take 30 cents, multiply it by two and a half, you get 75 cents. So I'll have a 75 cent target with a 30 cent stop loss. I'm gonna show you all that here. But I'm watching this last candle, going to put my order out, and what I did was I clicked the sell stop button like I showed you in yesterday's video. If you missed that, you can catch that video right here and then come back over and watch this one. But what I do is I have this red dotted line right here and that's just gonna be my order. I'll place it right before the market opens and then you'll see it go live. So as I press play on this one, you're gonna see the market open. Here's the clock right here. I place that bracket order and then we're live. So I'm looking to get breached below at 89.45. You can see I get triggered right there. So we're immediately in and now we're just watching. You can see I got filled here 300 shares short and we're just gonna wait and see this thing play out. You can see my target at 88.66, and you can see my stop loss at 89.71. My fill was at 89.41, and you can see I almost got stopped. I really thought this thing was gonna bounce and go higher until we got that move. Now, there was a little glitch you just may have seen, and I'll back it up just a tiny bit. So watch this order right here as I press play. You're gonna see it push down and then that T come out. What that is, is that's the system attempting to move my stop loss from 30 cents to break even. And for some reason today, it, it didn't work. I don't know what happened, but it didn't do the auto move. So you're gonna see here in a second, I'm gonna move my stop loss to break even manually right here. So what I did right there was, that's how quick it was. I had it at 89.71 and I wanted to move it to 89.41. Accidentally, I went to 89.45, that was a mistake. But as you can see, all I do is click on that area and you get this big drop down that opens up and then you can select your stop price you wanna move it to. And then you just hit update. So as I pick 89.45, all I have to do is punch this update button. So I punch that button and I'm live. So now my stop loss is at break even roughly, and I can just sit back and watch. Now this one started to get kind of cranky. It pushed down almost to my target. Then it retreated back up within about, I think six cents of my stop loss, then reversed again. So still learning the system, still watching Trader Works, Workstation on IVKR and trying to figure this out. But so far I really, really like it. Now you can see right there that bottom wick, it came in, almost hit the target, and now it's retreating. So again, I'm thinking, okay, maybe this one isn't gonna work out. We're not gonna get the full 75 cents. But, you know, we got a nice move below the low of this last 15 minute candle. Sort of my, instead of an opening range breakout or breakdown, I like to trade the closing range breakdown. So this closing range breakdown seems to be holding. And if you're ever curious, these triangles, that's my entry. And then when I cover the position, it'll have a green or a, I think a blue triangle and that will be my, my exit position. It, might, it marks it nicely on the chart and I really like that. But you can see volume sky high right here. It's, um, 
it's doing its thing. It's just taking a minute, a little longer than the 16 seconds from the trade yesterday. But ultimately, it pushes back down, and right there, that blue triangle signifies that I bought to cover. 300 shares were sold short right here at 89.41, and then covered down here at 88.66. So I'm gonna flip from the live video over to the live platform, just so I can show you my, my summary and everything. So you can see the trades that you just saw um, on the other screen, but I wanna show you the commissions on each of these trades. So we got a uh, buck 50 when I covered and $2.06 when I actually shorted the position, got short. Here's the summary. So you can see bought and sold 300 shares. Remember yesterday I went 200 and today I decided to go up to 300. And then you can see the average bought price, the average sold price, and then my commissions for today, $3.56. As many of you know, this is new for me. I'm used to trading on Thinkorswim, um, a TD Ameritrade's platform where they don't have commissions. So I'm getting used to paying for my trades. So far, I'm completely okay with it because they're lightning fast. There are no delays. Everything's running beautifully. And on my 300 shares for today, my realized P&L was $222. So tomorrow I'm looking to maybe go to 500 shares. I'm trying to get back to my normal size. And let me do a quick calculation. My normal size right now, um, I'm thinking about repeating my R value from January and carrying that into um, February because I'm trying to increase it by $50 each month and January was $350 risk or R value. And I was gonna go to 400 for, uh, for February, but I missed most of this month. So I might stay at 350 and I'm gonna divide that by 30 cents. So it looks like when I'm about ready to go, I'll be buying and selling about 1,200 shares. That's pretty close if I use the 30 cent stop. So I'm trying to work back up to 1,200 shares. I'll probably spend February at the $350 risk level and then save the $400 R for March. We'll see how that goes. But this trade was great. Um, I wanted to show you this feature of IDKR. You can actually see the candle last candle of the pre-market where I played my closing range breakdown. And I can grab this little slider over here and move it. And when I do that, you can see the next candle comes in. And so you can see right here, this opening range candle comes in and takes out the lows of my closing range candle. 10 cents below, I get filled. It pushes down, I got the full 75 cents and then it went beyond that just a little bit. One thing I'm trying to monitor is if I move a stop loss to 30 cents from 25 cents, just that five cents is gonna add about 12 and a half cents to the target. Because remember, you gotta take everything multiplied by 2.5, which is my preference to go 2.5 R to one reward to risk ratio. So in this case, it made it to 75 cents and it even went beyond. So that's really encouraging for maintaining this stop loss at 30 cents. So if I slide this further along, you'll see the next candle come in. Now, this candle technically, I don't, I don't know if it pushed down before it came up, but this one would have stopped me out at my break even. <clears throat> but it did go lower. It went even further than 75 cents. So AMD continues to be a consistent performer in terms of just movement during the day. And that's what I need in my stock. I need to be trading stocks that are moving. AMD's been consistent for, for you know, the last six, eight months that I've been trading it. I do trade it every day. It's the only stock that I day trade. And right now I'm gonna continue to stick with it, albeit with an increase in my stop loss to 30 cents. So. 30 cent stop loss, 75 cent take profit. And now I wanna get into the specific reason why I've been shorting and not going long. So as I'm figuring out this new platform, I noticed it was a little confusing with putting a long trade and a short trade, both of the bracket orders on at the same time. There's an instance where I could get a generous fill on one side 
and that could cause the stop loss to overlap with the entry on the other trade. So I was trying to figure out a way around this, and I've asked you guys for support and help on this as far as, you know, what's the best way to trade the up and the down in the same name on the same day? Because I like to let the stock decide, are we going long or are we going short? So what I did is I went back to my metrics on TraderView.com, and if you want to sign up for one of those accounts, I like how I segued into this, if you want to sign up for one of those accounts and support the channel, go to the YouTube banner, there's a link there for TraderView, and if you don't see that or you want to go somewhere else, you can go to the description and there is a link there. Click that link, sign up for an account, that'll support the channel, you'll be able to log all your trades there. You can even log your trades from Trader Workstation, any platform, you can log your um, trades on that platform. And it's TraderView with a V-U-E, not V-I-E-W, TraderView, V-U-E. So I went back to the metrics and I basically dove deep into it looking at longs versus shorts, wanting to know am I, how much better am I on one side versus the other. And I looked at my 2020 earnings overall and it was 81 or 82% right in that area of all of my earnings for the year came from short-sided trades. So it made me think, if you take out some of the days where I had a loser on the long side and a winner to the downside, so I basically diluted that downside short win, it might be even higher than that. So I really got into some of the metrics and it made sense for me right now to just trade the short side and see if this continues to play out. So there are a couple benefits to this. By only trading one side, that means I'm cutting my buying power in half because to have both these trades on the board, I have to have buying power to cover the up and the down at the same time, even though technically only one would be running at once. So it's really done well with buying power. So I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. But so far, yesterday and today, we've had two, two and a half R winners. So we're up five R's on the week going into Friday. And tomorrow I officially get all of my buying power. I made a, another deposit. So I could technically go back to full size starting tomorrow morning. And then I'll be completely back to normal in terms of my trading and trading size. So that's kind of why I've been going short. The metrics are talking to me. And when I say metrics, I mean 200 to 250 trades. Um, I have about 100 and I think 135 137 logged in TraderView, and those are all live trades. Those aren't back tested. Those are just all live trades that I've taken. And then on top of that, there's a, a couple hundred back test historical trades. But the metrics are saying that with what I do, I'm a lot better to the short side. And I think that has a little bit to do with how violent the move can be to the downside and how when you see a stock pushing to the downside, sometimes your tendency is to get out if you're holding that stock. And that causes acceleration to the downside. Whereas when you see a big up move, a lot of people say, oh, I'm just gonna hold this because what if it goes higher? People will get out quicker the, when it's dropping than when it is climbing. And that's why stocks typically crash to the downside and that's why we kind of have positive drift, I think, to the upside because it's easier to hold a stock that's doing well in your favor than it is to hold a stock that's going against you and not doing as well. So that's my rationale. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think of that, if you think that's valid or not. Um, I hope this video was helpful. My goal is to just show live trades and show the entirety of the trade so that you can see what's happening. You can see the trade run. You can see how I handle it, what I'm doing. And then ultimately, I like to just show you the results. And the results for today, $222, $356 commission, 300 shares on the sell and the buy. And it's all right here. So hope that was helpful. If you have questions, as always, drop them below and we'll see you tomorrow.